Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and I'm not wearing my hat, I can't do the hat tip. Today we're building the uh, K6ARK portable radio antenna. You can find this thing on Amazon, there is a link in the description down below. This thing is ridiculously affordable and probably on the higher side of medium build difficulty. It's not easy, it's not hard, eh, maybe it's a little hard. Let's go take a look over on the workbench and get this thing built. So this is actually a really versatile antenna kit. Uh, there are a whole different ways you can put this thing together and that's one of the things that I think is interesting. Not only is it like exactly the right size for what you need, it is also able to be used for a whole bunch of different options. So there's some extra pieces in this kit that might not make a whole lot of sense until you take a look at the instruction manual and then the instruction manual on this thing is fantastic. So what I would suggest is things like this here that might worry you a little bit. Don't worry about it, I'll show you an easier way. Don't worry about it. This is a forming coil to make a coil in the end of your antenna to help bring different bands into, into shape, help whip them into shape for um, SWR factors. This is a printed circuit board and this is what I think is so exciting and sexy about this. This printed circuit board is designed to fit directly on the base of the connector. It's like, this is just amazing. This is, this is what I would say is an evolution in radio. Uh, you know, the NFED half wave has existed for a while, the 9 to 1 has existed for a while, the dipole has existed for a while, but nobody has shrunk this thing down, as far as I know, besides K6ARK, to get it to fit on the connector. This is beautiful. You can get this in um, male and female BNC setups, and uh, I got this one because I want to try plugging it directly into the radio and not having to run any coax or anything, and we'll see how that works. But uh, in this part of the video, we're going to get the transformer built around the connector. There's gonna be a couple of flying leads going out to your uh, antenna wire. And we're gonna do the antenna part next video because I don't want this one to take too long, too much of your valuable time. So what do we got? We've got uh, some glue-lined heat shrink, a bigger piece of glue-lined heat shrink. We've got the forming coil that I mentioned. We've got the K6ARK portable radio sticker. Becca's already taken one of mine because I have two of these kits and she's already taken one of my stickers. Um, we've got this little teeny tiny surface mount capacitor and we've got this little teeny tiny toroid and we've got some magnet wire or enamel wire and some more heat shrink. I'm gonna grab another piece of heat shrink also because I'm gonna do something different than what other people have done and uh, I'm gonna put a counterpoise on this. So I'm gonna have some red for the transmitting and some black heat shrink tubing for the um, counterpoise. That way I can tell which one's which. Uh, later on as we get farther into the process. So I've got my soldering iron warming up and I'm going to put the capacitor on here first because that's going to be the, the trickiest, most difficult thing. And I'll show you my easy pro tip for doing something like that. Uh, it starts with having a good set of tools and this is a pair of what I call hold close tweezers. So I have to squeeze them to open them and then they will hold on to whatever it is I'm holding on to. So I don't have to try and fight with holding it together while I fight with holding it in place, while I fight with all the other things I need to fight with. And so first thing I need to do is clear some space and get my soldering iron and my solder out. And what I like to do is put a little bit of solder on the tip, of the soldering iron, get it good and clean a little bit more on and then I will actually tin the pad and we had a little bit of surface tension there holding the pad together which is exactly why this process is going to work and now I need to figure out how to get this thing open without shooting the capacitor across the room So there's a couple of things that you can run into when you're working with one of these, and one of them is what's called tombstoning, where as you go to put it onto the pad, 
it goes and reshapes itself. It stands right up on the end, and that's okay, because you can always heat it up again and put it back down. And my dexterity with my left hand isn't as good as with my right hand, and that's also okay. And that's all it takes, and I don't even have a small tip on my soldering iron. Okay, so next up is the antenna wire, and I don't have the best pair of strippers for this, because this antenna wire that he's got in the kit is super strong, super heavy duty, super good stuff. So I had to fiddle with that a bit more than I wanted to. But here we are, let's get this thing into the board. And the way that you put this thing in the circuit board is through the bottom, you feed it into the hole that is marked antenna. You've got one for antenna and one for counterpoise. We'll get to counterpoise in a bit. Let's put the antenna wire in the antenna wire hole. And then we'll put a little bit of solder on there to hold it in place. Now we can get the wire through the strain relief hole. All right, one down. Let's get it cleaned up a little bit on the solder side by trimming that flush. Perfect. Okay, now we need to do that again. Okay, so next up is winding that toroid. All right, so we've got this stuff called enamel wire or magnet wire here. So I'm gonna carefully unwind this. And then we wanna fold back about three inches at the end. And each one of these squares is half an inch. So I need three inches, which is about there. So let's fold that back. I'm just giving it a good twist. And we need three turns of this wound up portion through the toroid. And then we'll need to put some more on after that. So let's pull that through like so. So that first one is the first pass through. This here is going to be our second pass through. You want to be careful not to kink it. I'm kind of just guiding it through so I can get both wires in. All right, and there is three turns through the center of the core. And then I need to make 18 more turns through. And I'll get that done really quick. And when that's done, then we will get them arranged nice and neatly around the core. Anyway, we got it all wound up. A couple of tips here I can share with you is you can move these windings around any amount you want when you're done with the, um, with the winding. You move the windings when you're done with the windings. And as a result, what I will do is I will move these. You need 18 of the singles. So I will move them into three sets of five plus three extra makes your 18. And then when you're done, you just space them out evenly and you're good to go. I'm going to trim this little bit of extra off of here. That's done. We'll put that magnet wire away with my other little tiny bits of magnet wire. And then we got to figure out how to get it mounted onto the board. We've got in, ground, and out. Okay, so the twisted pair goes into ground, which should be that one right there. The long end goes into out, and the short end goes into in. Gazinta, gazinta, gazinta. Okay, so how are we gonna make that happen? I'm gonna snip the end of this twisted pair open so that it'll fit. Okay, so this one here is the short one.
enamel wire coating is actually going to melt off as we're working. So you don't have to worry about scraping it off at all, really. Okay, and I got some extra solder on that hole. I need to open it back up again. So I'm gonna use some solder wick. And we're all fixed. Now, next up is the BNC connector. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get one of those pins down good. And I'm also gonna use some flux. If you've got flux, use it. That's what's in this jar, labeled Flux. I know it's really weird to label a jar what's in it. After I get some solder and some heat and some magic in place, I can then rearrange all of this stuff. Can I get some help here? All right, and now that you've got one in and you got it where you like it, you can move it around and get the rest of them in. And I, I like where that one is. All right, time for some heat shrink tubing. All right, we're gonna take the smaller of the two pieces of glue line heat shrink and put that on. It's getting there. There you have it. That was a fun little kit to build. And I'm sure that uh, coming up we will have some more fun with it. So I've seen people build these without putting the counterpoise on. You can run this without the counterpoise, but I figured if I don't put it on now, I ain't never getting it on there. That is how you do that. I would set aside probably twice as long as you think it's going to take in order to get it built because it's a little more fiddly than your normal build, just by all of the size constraints. But other than that, there is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy watching next. Thanks for being awesome.